Hi everyone, meteorologist Alan Rose here. Here's the deal. We've had high pressure and firm control of our weather. Seen unseasonably warm temperatures. We're chasing records both Thursday and Friday, but we're tracking some changes. And with an incoming storm, we thought it was a good time to show you, our viewers, how we do what we do. Model analysis, what the long range models are versus short range and how we come up with a forecast from that. So let's take to the maps. I'm gonna start out showing you this graphic that shows model grid points. Now grid points are spaced farther apart when we deal with long range forecasting. So for example, one grid point might show a high of 68, the other might show 72. To pick up that space in between, that's called interpolation. And we might say we could likely see a high of 70. Now with the shorter range models, there's more grid points to choose from. So when you get within a couple of days, that leads to a much more accurate forecast. This is a winter forecast timeline. About six to eight days out, we're trying to pay closer attention. We're observing patterns and potential systems. As we get closer, four to five days, we're looking at consistency between models and model runs. And then we prepare the forecast within two to three days. And when within 24 hours, we identify specifics like exact timing, location, threat impacts, as well as storm totals. Here's a comparison of the longer range models. The American or GFS model showing high amounts of snowfall which I'm not super enthused about. I think the model might be a little off base here. I'm leaning in towards the Euro, which shows the potential for maybe as much as two to four inches of accumulation from Saturday morning to Monday morning here in the Pikes Peak region. 